I don't remember my granddad too well. You know what it's like, your earliest memories typically look like they were shot on an old camera that's all grainy and out of focus. My only solid memories of granddad are just of the Easter weekend that he died, really. I must have been about six, I think. I didn't really understand what was going on. You don't at that age, do you? That and, you know, Easter. Kids are always overexcited at Easter. Just thinking of that great big pile of Easter presents on Sunday. You wouldn't really take in the fact that you're never going to see your granddad again. So my mum, my dad, my older brother James and I all piled into the car with our things on Good Friday. And we all sang carols as we started on the long drive to the little village up north where Granny and Granddad lived. Mum passed around those plastic crowns of thorns that people always wear at this time of year. Get everyone in the festive spirit, you know? I only used to wear my crown of thorns for mum and dad's sake. Dad always used to buy the cheap plastic ones from the supermarket down the road, and I always thought they were uncomfortable. We picked up James's then girlfriend Caitlin on the way. Caitlin's mum and dad had never really made a big deal about Easter, and she got on with our family really well, so they'd agreed to let her come up and stay with granny and granddad with us for the holidays. We passed the fields of daffodils and baby bunnies on our way into Toddeston. Granny and granddad lived in a house just outside the village. We passed a few country roads before we got a glimpse of their old farmhouse up at the top of the hill. It was as we were getting close that Dad started talking about how he wasn't sure if Granny was going to be able to cope with living all the way out here on her own. Mum shushed him at that point. Don't bring the mood down, Clive. Easter's meant to be a happy time. Anyway, so we pulled up in the driveway and the front door opened and Granny stepped out. Oh wow, how you've grown! said Granny as I ran up to give her a hug. Merry Easter, everyone. Oh, and James, oh my, you're as tall as your father. Oh, hello, Caitlin, it's so wonderful to see you again. Grandad didn't say anything, but he smiled as we all went inside before he had to go and have a little sit down out of everyone's way. Dad and James went out to decorate the back garden and put up the Easter cross while Granny fussed over us and Mum and Caitlin helped prepare the last supper. We all then had dinner together and it tasted so good. I've never been able to make the Last Supper as good as Mum did. After dinner we all gathered around the TV to watch a film together. There aren't that many child friendly movies about Easter, nowhere near as many as Christmas. There's usually a repeat of Jesus Christ Superstar on one of the channels, and there's The Passion of the Christ but I was never allowed to stay up to watch that. This year, ITV was showing an animated children's movie about the crucifixion, featuring talking animals in place of Jesus, the disciples, and the Romans. I remember liking it a lot at the time, but I showed it to my own kids many years later and found it was pretty dire. I don't know how my parents put up with it. At the end of the day, as the sun was setting and Grandad said he was getting weary, the grown-ups all agreed it was probably time to see out Good Friday. Mum helped Grandad squat down beside me, his knees shaking as he did so with his big bushy grey beard hanging inches from his face and showing me his old toothy smile. It was only now that I could see how pale his skin was, you could tell he was sick. What do you want most of all this Easter, Tom? He asked in his hoarse and croaky voice. I told him that I really wanted a PlayStation. Grandad smiled and said that he'd tell Jesus for me and they'd see what they could do. Mum took a picture as Grandad gave me a hug, and then Grandad said to me, I'll always be with you, Tom. Remember that. I'll always be with you. We all went out into the garden for evening prayers. We lit candles and placed them on the altar beneath the Easter cross, and Mum read from the book of John. Everyone sang hymns and gazed across at the hundreds and hundreds of multicoloured twinkling Easter lights that Dad and James had strung up across the garden over the course of the afternoon. It was after we'd all finished singing Always Look on the Bright Side of Life that Grandad said he was getting tired and that he needed to lie down in the green pastures beneath the cross. Mum, Dad and Granny all agreed as they wiped away tears and started heading inside. Grandad sat leaning against the cross. I was made to go inside and Dad shut the door behind me. Why can't Grandad come in with us, Dad? I asked. I... Grandad lives out there now, son, he said. 
Dad looked a bit shaky. He was still pretty teary about the whole thing, but I didn't understand what was going on. Mum then got us all to prepare the fish, loaves and wine for Jesus, and the sugar lumps for the horses that drove his chariot. Mum then took me upstairs to bed and told me to run a bath. She gave me the sleeping pill for the holy day of rest and warned me that I was to take it as soon as I went to bed. Can't have you staying up all Saturday. She then went back downstairs and the grown-ups enjoyed the rest of the evening while I got ready for bed. James and Caitlin retired to their room at the end of the hall. James started to take off his crown of thorns, but then Caitlin stopped him and asked him to leave it on. I went into my room after my bath and looked out into the back garden and saw Grandad lying against the cross. His eyes were closed and his shoulders were rising and falling rhythmically as he dozed. I wondered if I should take him a blanket in case he got cold out there, but I'd probably just get in trouble. I went to bed and I lay there staring up at the ceiling with all sorts of childish things buzzing through my head. I really hoped I would get that PlayStation. You often find once you've grown up that you can barely begin to describe what it's like being a child on Good Friday. Nothing else seems to matter in that moment. Not Jesus, not your granddad living outside now for some reason, nothing. It's a magical state that you'll never be able to truly experience again. I could almost picture Jesus flying over our house and coming down the chimney on Saturday and wandering through the silent house. The family would be spending the whole day in a blissful coma that reflects Jesus' deep sleep of death as he brings us his blessings. I yawned and I eventually managed to drift off. I never told my mum and dad that I woke up that night. It was my own fault, I'd forgotten to take my sleeping pill. I'd probably end up waking up late on Easter Sunday now. I could hear chanting coming from outside. I couldn't understand Aramaic back then, so it just sounded like gibberish to me. I crept up to the bedroom window and peered out through a gap in the curtains, careful not to draw attention to myself. I don't think it's strictly speaking a rule that children under 13 aren't allowed to see the rituals that bring our Easter presents, but I knew I wasn't supposed to, and mum and dad always said that Jesus comes and turns naughty boys and girls into pillars of salt, so I knew I must be doing something bad. There were now flaming torches lining the path to the crucifix, but the crucifix had been taken down and was lying on the grass. I could see mum stood there in her robes with her hood down waiting by the cross in the torchlight. She'd clearly been crying, but she held that fragile smile that she always used to use just to keep up appearances. Then, I saw two figures with their black hoods up, who I assumed were Dad and James, leading Grandad over to the cross. Grandad was now dressed in nothing but a towel. He looked so thin and pale, and he had these deep red marks all over his back, as if he'd been lashed. He had a different crown of thorns on his head now, this one looked like the expensive kind, not a cheap plastic one from the supermarket. The crown glistened with blood in the torchlight. Grandad lay down on the cross. Dad and James raised their ceremonial spears and chanted in Aramaic again as they began the ceremony. They used the spears to punch holes through Grandad's hands. Strangely, he didn't cry out as the holes began to bleed. I always used to cry whenever I cut my finger, but those cuts were tiny compared to the gaping wounds in Grandad's palms. The expression on his face was one of peace and tranquility. Dad and James then began threading fairy lights through his stigmata and pulling them taut and binding his arms to the cross. Dad and James then pulled at the cables and raised the cross upright once more and they hooked the cables into pegs that they dug into the lawn earlier. The fairy lights all around the garden and threaded through Grandad's body made the garden light up with all the colours of the rainbow. Mum put down some buckets for Grandad's stigmata to bleed into, and Grandad smiled down at Mum and Dad and James, and they all started to sing. I think they were singing Stairway to Heaven, but I can't quite remember. It was beautiful. 
one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I'm so lucky to have witnessed this. It's only happened once in our family. Human sacrifices bring the best Easter presents. All my friends at school were jealous when I told them. Maybe it's just bad luck that I've never had a sick and elderly relative dying around Easter time in the years since Grandad. Granny was a summer death, and Uncle Ned went around September. It's a shame, really. Maybe I'll end up dying around Easter and you can do me, hey? That'll be fun. Anyway, so I went back to bed and I took my sleeping pill immediately. I tucked myself in tight and started counting sheep. Jesus was coming! Jesus was coming! I woke up on Sunday morning and I was ecstatic. Jesus has been! Jesus has been! I was still very sleepy from the effects of the pill, but I felt warm and elated at the thought of what was waiting for me downstairs. I hurried out of my bedroom door and downstairs, still in my pyjamas, and I saw that outside on the lawn, Grandad's body had vanished, and in its place had been left the biggest pile of Easter presents I've ever seen. It can't have been as big as I remember it being, but to little six-year-old me it was the size of a mountain. I was then joined by mum and dad who'd wandered downstairs in their dressing gowns, and James and Caitlin followed, and we all piled out of the house and everyone picked out their presents from the pile. Everyone had their own large stacks of presents by the end of it. Mum got out the camera and took pictures, and she and Granny smiled sadly as I energetically ripped open my presents. It took me till the bottom of the pile, but I found what I wanted. It was wrapped in shiny red paper with little golden chariots on the side, and with a big label that said, To Thomas, Merry Easter, Love Jesus. I tore open the present as fast as I could, and I screamed in delight when I saw the logo on the box. A PlayStation! A PlayStation! I shouted to the heavens. Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Grandad! Thank you! Mum lowered the camera, having captured the moment of elation, and beamed her fragile smile across at me and wiped away a tear. She then cleared her throat. Now, say your prayers, Tom. Be a good boy. I nodded frantically and put the box on the ground in front of me, and I clasped my hands together solemnly. And my presents are his body and blood. And as our loved ones return to the earth, so shall he return to us one day. Amen.